In this video, we're going to talk about the management of sepsis. Sepsis is a big health issue. It causes death and also morbidity. Sepsis can be hard to identify in people, be it children or the elderly, especially children and the elderly. This video will again focus on the septic pathway in adults specifically. This is a general overview and an introduction to the septic pathway. It is advised that you learn your hospital's algorithm or pathway first. It is important to detect when a person is becoming septic by firstly looking at their risk factors, but also some signs and symptoms we can, which can be very general. These signs and symptoms include more than one of the following. Fevers, rigors, confusion, altered loss of consciousness, immunocompromised, having a chronic illness, abdominal pain and distension, have a line associated infection, urine frequency, as well as having an odorous urine, being of age greater than 65, having a cough and also having a lot of sputum. Finally, as a patient is in hospital, it is important, it is important to always check their vitals and to see of any trend in the observation chart. By charting the patient's vital signs regularly, we can predict possible dangers to come and intervene before the bad becomes really bad. So vital signs include low blood pressure, hypotension, body temperature that is unusually high, respiratory rate greater than 20, as well as tachycardia. Finally, bloods uh, can show neutrophilia or neutropenia, and these are also important findings. Anyone with suspicion of sepsis should have investigations, which on the, one of the most important one is measuring serum lactate. A serum lactate over 4 millimoles a liter indicates acidosis and highly, and highly likely sepsis. If sepsis is suspected, basic doctor's ABCD is performed. So A, A looks at the patient's airways, check for patency. B is for breathing, give oxygen and aim for an oxygen saturation of 95% or greater. C is for circulation, and circulation involves three things. Number one, get IV access, collect bloods and also check the bloods. If IV access cannot be obtained, call expert assistance, usually after two failed attempts. Bloods to collect include bloods for culture. Blood for culture should be done twice and collected from at least two different sites. Other blood tests include full blood count, EUC, CRP, LFT, glucose, and procalcitonin. The second part of circulation is to give IV fluids for resuscitation in case of septic shock. This is between 250 to 500 milliliters of 0.9 sodium chloride bolus. And if there is no response after that first dose, give another 250 to 500 milliliters of 0.9% sodium chloride again. Keep note that these values may change and that different hospitals may have different dosages. And again, this dose is for adults specifically. Finally, the third part of circulation is the administration of empirical antibiotics, and this is done intravenously. A, B, C, D. D is for disability. This is to quickly assess consciousness. A quick way to do so is by doing AVPU which looks at alertness, verbal response, pain, and unresponsiveness. E is examine or exposure. Examine the patient for source of infection. This may depend on what, the, what they presented with in the first place. For example, a lung infection or a UTI. Take a swab. Culture the swab. Perform a chest x-ray if pneumonia or lung infection is suspected. ECG for possible heart involvement. Check the skin for signs of rash or wound infections. F is for fluid balance. 
Patients with suspected sepsis should be monitored for fluid input and output. A urinary catheter is usually done to assess fluid output. Aim for a urine output of 0.5 milliliters per kilogram per hour for adults. G is for glucose levels, as hypo and hyperglycemic states can cause uh, ill patients. Finally, it is important to monitor and reassess for any signs of deterioration. These signs can include the patient's level of consciousness going down. The patient is becoming more tachypneic and tachycardic. Their systolic blood pressure is less than 100, very hypotensive. Or a urine output less than 0.5 milliliters per kilogram per hour, despite fluid intervention or elevating serum lactate above 4 millimoles per liter. It is important to keep chart and look at the trends in the observations chart. Finally, it is important to remember that sepsis is a leading cause of mortality and morbidity worldwide. It is important to identify patients who are susceptible or who may have sepsis and to intervene before it gets worse. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video.